China has implemented new rules forbidding its citizens under the age of 18 from playing more than three hours of video games a week. The new restrictions serve as a push from Beijing to suppress what it says is a growing addiction among its youth. The crackdown has shook the gaming market across the globe. Ryan, what's your take? Well, when I first saw this, I was thinking, can I enroll my kids in this so that China, <laughs> so that China can do the big brother parenting that, that I'm obviously failing to do because my kids are doing a little bit more than this? Uh, Three hours a week. So, I mean, it, it, the geopolitical implications are interesting. I mean, th this is this is China getting extremely serious about uh, about cracking down on its on its workforce and and uh, I guess getting nervous that it's you know that it's that it's producing uh, too many soft uh, game game addicted uh, workers. Uh, the, the civil liberties implications are are insane. I mean, the idea that they're going to like turn their surveillance state onto these children, uh, require them to play under their real names, and basically, you know, use facial recognition and other monitoring to to watch, you know, hundreds of millions of children and make sure that they don't uh, play, uh, is is you know really puts into focus, you know, what what kind of surveillance state has developed over there. Kim, I don't know, what's your read? Yeah, I mean, I, I think what they plan to do is I, I don't know if the government is doing it or if it's that they're putting the onus on the gaming mm -hmm. companies. So they might be saying, from what I understand, but of course, you know, I, I think we'll probably learn more as time goes on, but that they're ma they're telling the gaming companies that they need to have restrictions on how often they allow the users to log on, that they're only allowed to log on Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays and only for a certain amount of time and that they do need to use their real names and they do have the facial recognition, like you mentioned. So they would know, OK, you're not just creating another username and then going on there and playing some more and then creating another username. And you end up with these kids that have like 25 different <laughs> usernames so that they can play video games all day, every day. Um, I mean, this is really interesting that you know, look, I, I have an Asian parent, tiger mom, right? So that is a, a real thing in Asian families, for sure, that there is this, you have to focus on your studies, um, you playtime is very, very limited. And so it's interesting that this has now even seeped into onto the government level. And it, I, I would imagine that there probably was a lot of support from the parents in China that were saying, good, do something to block my kid from just going in their bedroom and playing video games on their phone. Um, but it will create, I mean, look, if they are if they if they are forced to spend their time studying, to spend their time doing all of these other things, they will create a generation that far surpasses, I think, other generations around the world. And that is something to really be uh, looking at. I mean, I, obviously, I don't think we should be doing the same thing here, but it is concerning, I think, on that level. Oh, it's extraordinarily creepy, and it's, I mean, big government at the height of big government. But I say this a lot on the program. China's playing a 100-year game, whereas in the U.S., we're thinking, you know, two, four years out. This is about investing in the future, having, you know, the, the next generation of Chinese officials who, you know, are going to be co-opted by the CCP to be in the best position to perform and compete on the global stage. And the, I mean, it, to, to the credit of the Chinese people, they're already outperforming American students in STEM fields by significant margins. So it's not even that, you know, they're falling behind and this is why we're implementing this, you know, global crackdown within China on gaming. They're actually uh, incredibly advanced in both science and math. Um, but yeah, this is, this is a long game investment by the CCP in the future of their goals for for domination the implementation well, just, of this is yeah, no, yeah the implementation ahead, is interesting Ryan. they're saying like you, thursday from 8 to 9 friday from 8 to 9 p.m and saturday from 8 to 9 p.m those those are the hours that that you're able to be on it seems like there's going to be just this uh deluge onto the internet uh for those <laughs> for those for those three hours and and everything is going to uh sh everything is going to shut down uh the, yeah like and then I guess they're and then they're off until, you know, from Sunday, Sunday through Thursday. Yeah. Just to bring up this point again, uh, to kind of like hammer it home, I think, is that, you know, even in this country right now, we do see that Asian students tend to outperform students in other races. And again, it comes down to culture. It's really a lot of at home. 
uh, mom and dad are very much telling this the kid that they need to study and study and study some more. And you're going to be either an engineer or a doctor. Those are your two choices. And you got to study and study in order to get that done. And now we see how well that actually works. I mean, it, it's not good for mental health. We have a lot of issues with depression and uh, if, and fear of failure inside of the Asian community. It's something we definitely struggle with, this kind of the the um, always needing to seem perfect. But if you translate that uh, that to a national scale, that is going to be, I mean, that's going to be intense to see this this generation rise up in China that is going to be well advanced and ahead of everyone else. And then it kind of does call into the question of what can we do to combat that? Or do we do nothing? And then we just deal with it in 30 years. That's a great but point. Also, I don't know. Also, as I'm thinking through the logistics, how, how do they know if you're playing offline? Like how, like if you're, if you're playing Nintendo Switch and you're, and you're not connected to the internet, Oh, I'm um, sure yeah, many a Chinese kid are thinking of how I'm to sure get around are. this. Yes. <laughs> right, and that's, that's the other thing that these mass surveillance and authoritarian systems do is they, they create people who are experts at working around the system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and that might be part of their plan as well. They're like, okay, then we're going to have these like super hackers <laughs> later on. That's true. <laughs> no doubt. Well, we'll have more rising for you right after this.